Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another walking mech, but this time this is a full on base that has all the stuff you need for survival mode, including turrets, which you can just about see at the back of the ship. And of course, at the very front, don't know why I call this ship, this land vehicle. But yes, this is called the Sand Inspired Walker Base, which is a lovely thing that I'm currently standing on. So we've got solar panels around the top for some renewable power. We've got our turrets that we already talked about. We've got a second floor with all of our important stuff for a bit of role playing, like living quarters, kitchen quarters, and of course, the place where we can actually drive this thing around. And we do have an access point to get up and onto the top of those solar panels, since they ever took damage in combat. We can easily repair this up. So we've got three legs on both sides. We can change directions, much like the previous make that showcased not too long ago. And we can go backwards, but it is a bit awkward with how it's all set up, to the point that I'm just going to show you it straight off the bat. So we're coming around to here, dropping all the way down into this part, all the way around into the helm. Here we go. So now I'm going to press number one. After a short delay, it's going to start up, then we're going to start walking forwards. Here we go. And this is the rate of speed it goes at. So it's going at about two meters per second, maybe one and a half. I'm not too sure, but it's incredibly slow. But yes, it is still a good idea to make it slow, especially because it's a base and we'll be carrying all of your important stuff. Go and look at it like so. There we go. That's how it looks. In fact, we'll use three cameras so you can see it moving all the way along the terrain. So down to here. Here we go. Hind the HUD. And there we are. Just trudges along. Two legs move forwards. Then two legs follow it straight after. But my character once again bring up the HUD. Here we go. So now what I'm going to do is press number two. This is going to turn us to our left. There we go. Very, very slow. Then we press it again to stop. Move it in a straight line. Then we press number three, and this would make us turn to the right. Here we go, that's much easier to see in the first person view. And off we go. Once again, we turn it off, move in the straight line. But what if we want to move backwards? Now, this is a bit odd because the naming schemes of the two pistons are not in English, not too sure what they mean, but I sort of figured it out. But I'm going to come to the third person view and press number four. What this is going to do is lower our front and our back middle legs onto the ground, then press number five to lift up the back leg, and then the front middle. And now we press number one and we'll start to move backwards. That seems to me how it's supposed to work, although I'm not too sure if it is meant to work that way, but it seems to work quite well with that. We don't want to do this while it's moving because it does get a bit confused as to what it's trying to do. So bring it to a stop. There we go. Press number five. Press number four. And now we can move forwards once again. And there we go. Yes, I'll make it come to a stop. There we are. Now we just come out of this, just go and drop them down onto the ground. There we go. Bring the free camera all the way up, we'll go through the F10 menu, have a look around the outside, and then we're going to drive to destruction to that Space Pirate District headquarters so you can see it right at the very back there, and we'll just, well, make it get torn to shreds by that. So pressing F10, finding it over here, here it is. This thing is 2,101 large blocks, using pretty much all the DLC packs. We've got no information whatsoever, it would be a very good idea to actually have the controls listed on here. It'd make it much easier than actually trying to guess what the controls do, but hey, how much I could do about that. So we're just going to give this a thumbs up. Here we go, round towards the front. I'm going to have a look around the outside. So putting on my lights, there we go. In fact, we don't need the light turned on. This is what we get for the very front of the Sand Inspired Walker Base. That's a bunch of window blocks, our fancy new window blocks. I think they're called the bay windows, where we can see our helm to try this thing around. With a small control seat for your co-pilot to go and sit on. Above that, railings going all around this thing to make sure you're not going to accidentally fall off this thing as it wobbles along the ground. And above that, there's our interior turret, one at the back, for a bit of defense. Come around onto the side, here we go, we see how our legs have been set up. So we've got hinges, and then we've got pistons and hinges, which is a very odd thing with how they're all being set up. It's very complicated compared to a lot of mechs that just, maybe just use a hinge, maybe just use a rotor. But anyway, throwing pistons into this, that add that extra bit of complexity. Okay, my lights, here we go, up to there, we've got our piston onto hinges. Down to here, another hinge, all the way down, and then got a bunch of wheel suspensions and small wheels. How these legs actually work at the end of the day, I do not know. That's how they've been set up. Anyway, around onto the sides. There we go, which actually come past the legs and up to here. So there we go, we've got a barrel saw, a few bits and bobs inside. Over to there, there's a small cargo container. Over to that, I believe that is the back of a survival kit. I'm not too sure, because you don't actually see the back of the survival kit too often. But yes, over to there, there's your assembler. There's the ladder to get all the way up to the top of those solar panels. There's a little seat for you to sit on and take in the view from the surrounding areas. Over to there, there's a small warfare battery. There's our rear interior turrets. There's some lovely use of our scaffolding blocks coming all the way across from that battery onto the top there and onto our solar panels. Round towards the back, there's your ladder of how you're going to get up and inside this thing. That leads into a sliding door so you go into the interior, eventually work your way to the front, then up in that little section they dropped down at the very start of the video. 
but you know, my light getting a bit closer. Down to here, here's how wheel suspensions or our leg suspensions have been set up. They come across onto a large hinge, yes, it gets even more complicated. And all the way over to here, then they've got our hydrogen engine. There's some LCD screen tennis on weather. Of course, our power and hydrogen. Over to here, I'm not too sure what this actually is. In fact, that looks. Yeah, that is that. It's a button panel upside down. So I grab hold my character and bring it all the way over. So here we come, all the way around, past this ladder, up to here, bring up the HUD, and just bring it all the way across to here. So we've got our hydrogen engine on and off, if that's what you want to do. Anyway, pulling away from this, grab hold the free camera once again, moving away from this, all the way up here, past the door, past our interior turret, all the way up looking down. There we go. That's our solar panels in lovely white colouring. Over to there, there's a small ramp to come down onto our assembler. Eventually leads down to that ladder, next side chair, to be able to get down into the main body of the vehicle. All the way up to here, we've got our truss pillars, marked to our truss decoy from the latest DLC pack. To make sure all the shots will hopefully go for that, and not your precious legs that do get disabled, or you're not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Anyway, down to there, it's your compact antenna. Down to there, it's your small little beacon. And of course, towards the front, more solar panels. And of course, down to there, it's your interior tower once again. All the way down underneath this thing, not going to be able to see too much, just a bunch of steel blocks. And of course our hinges that lead across our legs. Over here we do have an access panel to access our cargo container in the middle of the ship, which is a very handy stuff. So instead of you having to get up and inside this vehicle to access that, you now just come underneath it, hit that, load up or unload anything you need to do. Anyway, over there, there's your hydrogen tanks. And then towards the front there, there is our hydrogen engine. And with that, I believe it's time for me to grab hold my character, come up this ladder and head on inside for a small little interior tour. So up the ladder, opening up this, in we come. Closing right behind me, what we're going to see is a bunch of very yellow areas. Yes, this is over glaringly yellow. Not that sure if it's intended or not, but you can always turn it down if you don't like it. But yes, we're instantly greeted by a table on one side, a kitchen clock over to this side, so you can easily just rush in here and grab a drink if you want to do that. Then turning around over to here, we got ourselves a shower and toilet. Into this part, around, we got the smaller living quarters, got a bookshelf, our bed, a little seat to sit on, and a small table for you to view outside, the legs just wobbling past the window. Onto the opposite side, here we go, we then got a little kitchen block once again. But then over to here, we've got a little table to eat your food, discuss your plans with your co pilots and hobby out this. Over to here, here's your little shelf, some decoration. Over to here's your ladder that goes up to the floor that we started on and dropped down from to get to the helm, which is right around this corner. Here's your lovely bay windows, which do absolutely love these things. But yes, here's your helm, here's your little control seat, then nothing set up. Hobby out here, and then coming all the way around up this ladder. Here we go, past this little barrel. And here we are where I started. So we can look down and see who's driving this thing. And of course, up to here we can get blasted by that turret if you're an enemy. Round to this side, past this, there's your survival kit. So what's the back of the survival kit? There's your cargo container. Over to here, here's the back of your little assembler. If we turn around and come over to here, we've got a little like overhang so we can view what's going on at the very back of this vehicle. And once again, you get shot by the turret if it decides you're an enemy. And then over to here, another ladder come up. Here we go, final part of this. Now we're up to here, up this little ramp, now we're on top of the solar panels, we can do some maintenance work if we want to do that. And there we go with that. So now what we're going to do is come all the way down once again, drop down here, into here, down this ladder shaft, and around the corner, into the helm, and it's time to go through the rest of the controls. In fact, we do need to go through the rest of the controls, because we've gone through all of them at the very start of the video, because the only controls we have are for the wheels. But if you do want to have some more controls on this, I suppose you could turn on and off your assembler if you want to save on a bit of power. In fact, speaking of assemblers, coming to here, and finding out we've got a refinery. No, we do not. But we do have that survival kit to refine up basic stuff. If we want anything bigger, we would need to extend the vehicle all the way out. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start this up. Bring up the HUD. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I want to go over to that one. And I want to turn this around over to here. So we're going to turn all the way around very carefully now. And make our way over to the Space Pirate District Headquarters. And here we go. We are now trudging along towards the Space Pirate District Headquarters at the very slow rate of about 2 meters per second. I don't know what the space pirates are going to be thinking as this thing comes all the way towards it. It's a very easy target, but still, it's a very nice vehicle to use in survival mode if you want to have something very different. Of course, you will need to spawn this in directly through the menu because you won't be able to build this up. This is very complicated, with a lot of stuff going on with it. There could be a change of pace for a survival mode adventure if you want to have a wandering base. And of course, you could always download this thing and actually look at the design, see how it's been set up, make a much more bigger version, like a large block gigantic version, and use that to house all the stuff you need for survival mode. That's what you want to do. But for now, we're just going to keep going all the way out to it. I'm just going to come up to here, give myself a better gun. So over here, give myself a rocket launcher. There we go. Now it's time to look all the way ahead. So we're going to shoot all the way into it. And it'll probably explode before it even hits the target. In fact, it looks like I missed it completely. 
So she's going to switch over to the rapid fire gun over here. Yes, this is going to take quite some time to do, to the point that I might need to skip ahead once again. And here we go, the gun has opened fire, our interior turret is going, we lost our leg and the front there. Looks like it spawned it just a bit too close, but look at that little thing going. In fact, we're going to actually try and assist this thing by giving myself a welder. And coming all the way up to this, and here we go, we'll make sure that this thing is in tip-top shape at all times to be able to defend the vehicle from while the district headquarters. We've got to keep going forwards, although it looks like, oh, we are taking quite a lot of damage. We'll make sure that's all repaired up there. We are having a bit of a problem, because we lost our leg on the front there, or at least we lost one of our legs. But here we go, we're now taking a little bit of damage on that turret. I'm just going to keep going right behind it. We've got to keep this thing all the way up to 100%. That looks like it was a bit of bad damage. It looks like we have been fully disabled there. Yes, we have. We're now exploding quite a lot. As soon as I turn my back on the turret, it was destroyed. Coming all the way down here in the first person view. Or why did I say first person view? In the cockpit view even. Here we go. This is what it looks like. So we are slowly <laughs> turning around. And as expected, this was not doing too well. It's a gigantic target. No, you need to have a few more guns on here. I also have some way to protect the legs all the way at the back here. I was going to say I'm not too sure what it's fixed onto, but it looks like it's going for our power. Very smart of the space pirates. They have been updated. Usually they can just go for any old functioning blocks that they can see. But yes, that's pretty much it for this vehicle. What that has to offer. And well, all they can take from these space pirates. And as per usual, it was done deliberately just to have a bit of fun for the end of this video. The vehicle itself is still a lot of fun to play around with. Yes, it is a bit slow. Yes, it could do very much from... I'm not sure what actually happened there. It seemed to flip all the way over. But yes... It could benefit greatly from having some thrusters at the back there to help assist it, make it move it a bit quicker. But if you do like that slow trudging effect that it does have, especially going around on, say, like the Pertan planet through all the desert and whatnot, it could be a little bit of fun. So if you link to the description below, you should download it and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.